Congratulations on your purchase of the Tamarisk 320. I'm Allison with DRS. The Tamarisk 320 Camera Core boasts an enabling thermal imaging technology that is driving giant performance leaps in the world of commercial surveillance and security. It is the end result of years of research and practical application work by DRS, an industry leader in thermal imaging solutions for both military and commercial use. The Tamarisk 320 is extremely small, lightweight, and power efficient, requiring less than one watt in its steady state operation. And DRS is offering it now at a price that makes it the first choice for those targeting the commercial surveillance and security marketplace. If you'd like more information about the complete DRS line of thermal imaging solutions, go to www.drsinfrared.com. Keep watching because this video will walk you through the setup of the Tamarisk 320 and the camera control software. You'll learn how to view and manipulate analog output on your display and digital output on your PC. To do that, let's go to Rob in the lab. Today, I'm gonna demonstrate how to connect the Tamarisk 320 with the optional feature board to your analog display monitor and to your computer. This will allow you to view analog and digital video output. I'll also demonstrate the Tamaris camera control software. Here's what you'll need to get started. A breakout box, a camera interface cable, and a tripod mount bracket, all available from DRS. In today's demonstration, we're also using these additional items, which can be purchased online or from a reputable computer electronics retailer. A mini USB to USB cable, a camera link video cable, a tripod with quarter 20 screw mount, an analog display, a coaxial cable with a BNC adapter appropriate to your analog display. And then we also have a digital frame grabber card. For today's demonstration, I'll be using a frame length express card by Imprex. There are many other suitable frame grabbers on the market. You can find a list of compatible frame grabbers in the Tamarisk 320 support documentation. Let's open the box and get started. But first, let's follow proper ESD procedures and put on our grounded wrist strap. The camera is packed in a static shielded bag, so open the bag and take out the camera. The first step is to mount the camera on the tripod, so remove the retaining ring from the camera. Now take the tripod mount bracket and insert the camera. Then screw on the retaining ring to hold the camera in place. The tripod bracket mounts to a standard quarter 20 tripod. So, let's mount the camera to the tripod. Next, we'll connect the breakout box. This is the interface between the camera, the analog display, and the computer. On the breakout box, you'll see a mini USB connector, a BNC connector, a 30-pin electrical interface, a power jack to power the camera if RS-232 is used to control the camera, a digital video camera link connector, and finally, an RS-232 connector. Now, let's power the camera. The Tamarisk 320 is a very low-powered camera, requiring less than one watt at steady state. It accepts an input voltage between 3 and 18 volts, depending on the configuration. It was designed so that you could power the camera and provide serial communications through a USB cable. Connect the USB cable to the USB port on the laptop. And connect the mini USB connector to the breakout box. Now, locate the camera interface cable. This cable connects the camera to the breakout box. The connectors on the camera interface cable are keyed, so they only go in one way. Plug one end into the breakout box, and plug the other end into the camera. That click we just heard indicates the camera is receiving power and has performed a one-point calibration. As the camera warms up, it'll continue to perform one-point calibrations to correct for temperature variations. Now, let's hook up the analog display. For this particular display, we're using a coaxial cable with BNC connectors. Now, your connector type may vary based on the display you're using. Attach one end of the cable to the breakout box.
and attach the other end to the analog display. And there we are. We're seeing live thermal imagery from the Tamaris 320. Hey, the camera is still warming up and will continue to make corrections to give you an optimal image. Now that the camera is powered and the image is on the analog display, the next step is to launch the camera control software. For this demonstration, I'm using DRS camera control software, which is available at no cost upon request. If you don't already have it, go to www.drsinfrared.com to download. It takes about five minutes to install, and your software package comes with full installation instructions. In our demonstration, I've already downloaded the software and have the launch icon on my desktop. To launch the software, simply double click on the icon. The software should auto detect the camera. In some cases, however, you may need to manually add the device. In this case, click the manually add device button. From the auto detect device pull down menu, select DRS Tamaris 320. For communication type, select USB. Click the COM button and choose your COM port. Click on the baud rate button and choose 192. Then click the try search again button. If the camera is still not found, make sure you've selected the right COM port. The software has discovered the camera. This is the information page where you'll find the camera's serial number, the part number, the system, and other important specifications. Click the Settings tab. Here you can perform several functions. Under Calibration, you can manually trigger a one-point calibration or a one-point no shutter through the lens calibration. Under Automatic Calibration, the default interval for non-uniformity correction, or nuke, is every five minutes. You can override this setting and set the period anywhere between zero and 9,999 minutes. Then, click the Set Period button to save your changes. Next is the image orientation. Click the radio buttons to choose normal, flip vertically, flip horizontally, or flip both. If I choose flip horizontally, you can see the image flip on the analog display. I'll set it back to normal. Under shutter, you can use the radio buttons to select open or closed. For polarity, click the radio buttons to select white hot or black hot. White hot's the most common mode for viewing thermal imagery. This means that higher temperature objects appear white in the display. If you select black hot, higher temperature objects will appear black, which is an advantage in some situations. For video out select, the default shows the analog out enabled and digital out enabled boxes checked. Parallel out is not available for this configuration of the Tamaris 320. Under analog mode, we can use the radio buttons to select standard NTSC or several PAL modes. And under digital mode, use the radio buttons to select 8-bit digital video out or 14-bit digital video out, depending on your specific requirements. Let's move on to AGC. The AGC provides some useful tools for improving image quality. Under AGC mode, we have four choices with radio buttons. They are automatic AGC, freeze AGC, manual AGC, and disable AGC. We'll leave this on automatic AGC for now and move on to gain level bias. By moving the gain and level sliders, we can optimize the image quality. There are three ways to adjust the gain and level. The first method is to set your step, then use the arrow buttons at the top and bottom of the sliders. In the field next to step, you can set the amount the slider will move with each click up or down. For our example, We'll set the step to 200. This will move the gain or level the sliders 200 counts with each click on the arrow. Then you can fine tune as needed. The second way to adjust the gain level bias is to use your mouse to drag the sliders to the preferred settings. This is the easiest way to quickly optimize the image. The third way is to manually enter gain and level settings in the field boxes under the sliders. The method you choose to set your slider will depend on personal preference and your specific application. After you've optimized your image, click the Pan and Zoom tab. The red rectangle under Pan and Zoom represents the sector of the image we're viewing. Across the bottom, click the buttons to choose 1x, 2x, 3x, or 4x zoom. You can see as I did that that the rectangle changes size. 
and you can see the zoom effect on the analog display. You can also zoom using the slider or zoom incrementally by clicking the plus or minus buttons. After you've selected the level of zoom, you can drag the region of interest or ROI around with your mouse. Use the arrow buttons to fine tune specific areas of the image you want for the ROI. If you connect more than one camera to your setup, you may need to click the search for new connected devices button. You'll see the serial number tab for the newly installed camera appear. To control each camera, you must first click its serial number tab. You can click the help tab at any time to access the on-screen help menu. Click on any topic link for more information. Click the home link to return to the help menu. All right, let's configure our setup for viewing digital video over camera link. First, install the frame grabber card. There are many suitable frame grabbers on the market. A list of compatible frame grabbers for use with this software is provided in the Tamarisk 320 technical data package. I'm using a frame length express made by Imperx. Install it into your PCI express slot. Next, Take the camera length cable and connect it to the frame grabber card. I'm using channel 1. Next, take the other side of the cable and connect it to the breakout box. That's it. I've just completed the setup for viewing digital video on the PC. Let's launch the software that came with the capture card. This enables us to view the digital video on our computer screen. Once the capture card software is launched, click the video icon to bring up the digital image. Okay, there I am. This may be different depending on the software that comes with your frame grabber card. Review your software features so that you can control frame size and bit rate options. Now we have the camera control software application running providing us with the means to communicate and control our camera through the USB cable. We also have both the analog video and the digital video out enabled. Even better, you can view both the digital and the analog images at the same time. Any manipulations to the camera control software, such as moving the sliders in the AGC mode, affect both the analog and the digital video image. Once again, the setting you choose will depend on your specific preferences and applications. The Tamaris 320 is now ready for your evaluation. Thanks for watching. Visit us anytime at www.drsinfrared.com.